Good day, everyone. Welcome again to the Wings Radio program, where we hope you will be uplifted and encouraged by what you hear. We want to inspire you through Christ to find the power of God's Word to the challenging times in your lives. Be sure to visit the blog page for prophetic words, updates, and godly inspiration at www.wingsofprophecy.com. Now here's your host, Glenda Lankus. Hello, believers. And welcome to the Wings Radio Show. I'm your host, Glenda Linkus, and this week we are continuing our series, Hindrances on the Pathway to Promotions, Test from the Life of Joseph. This week is test number eight, the test of promotion. You might be thinking, how could a promotion be a test? A promotion is what I'm trying to get to. But you might be surprised. This test comes from Genesis chapter 41, verses 41 to 43. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. After 13 long, lonely years in a foreign land, first in slavery and then in prison, Joseph was promoted to prime minister of Egypt. He was just hoping to go home, right? But he got so much more than that. The ring that Pharaoh placed on Joseph's hand was his signet ring, and it gave Joseph the authority to transact business on behalf of Pharaoh. It was a sign of very great trust. Why was it that Pharaoh could trust so completely this young Hebrew slave that he had only just met? He could trust him because of his wisdom and because his integrity showed so completely. It was obvious that God's spirit was with Joseph. And even Pharaoh, who worshipped who knows how many other gods, recognized it. So you've been living for God for a while and God has shown you a vision or given you a dream of your future. And you've been serving God and spending time in the Word and spending a lot of time in prayer and you know God is going to bring this thing to pass, right? Me too. And sometimes we wonder, okay, Lord, why hasn't it happened yet? You know, am I doing something wrong and it's holding it back or am I not doing something you want or whatever? We do sometimes wonder, but in our hearts... We know that God will fulfill that thing that he has shown us. And after he promotes you, what then? What if tomorrow you woke up and your promotion showed up very suddenly? What then? How would you receive it? How would you walk in it? How would you act? Have you ever thought about that? Okay, it's suddenly here. I've been waiting all these years. It's suddenly here. Now what? When God first brought me to Dallas in 1998, when I had no idea that I was in a wilderness, and it was absolutely terrifying because I didn't know what was happening and my life was falling apart. And I came to Dallas. I was going to stay with my dad who had cancer for a little while and spend some time with him. And then, you know, I expected to have a job to go to out in the oil field. And the job never came. And one day I'm eating a peanut butter sandwich out in my truck from the... um, Bank of America where I was temping as a switchboard operator and all of a sudden and I was praying and suddenly it hit me what if he has me here because I'm going to be staying here and my blood ran cold because I realized I felt a witness in my spirit and I I realized that was exactly what had happened I was so scared I thought I was going to be sick I was so scared y'all I was so afraid I didn't know what he was up to Lord what are you doing I don't have any money I don't have anybody here. To, what if I fall on my face? There's no one to fall back on, you know. My daughter was in Oklahoma going through a divorce. My one grandchild who was a baby was in Oklahoma and needed me. I couldn't be there. My mom was in Oklahoma. She needed me. I couldn't be there. My son was in prison in Oklahoma. Everybody I loved was in Oklahoma. And here I was down here in Texas. 
over the course of about a two two months or so, I can't remember if it was one month or three months, how long it was, every time I turned on the radio, every time I turned on the TV and listened to a sermon, God gave me Deuteronomy chapter 8. So I want to read you some verses from Deuteronomy 8 that are extremely significant. and We all need to commit these to heart. For the Lord your God brings you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains, and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land wherein you shall eat bread without scarceness, which means you won't do without. You shall not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you may dig brass. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Beware that you forget not the Lord your God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command you this day. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built goodly houses and dwelled therein, and when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart be lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And verse 17 says, And you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand has gotten me this wealth. And then 18 it says, But you shall remember the Lord your God. You shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he that gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. And it shall be, if you do at all forget the Lord your God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. Makes me think of when Adam and Eve were tempted in the garden. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or you will surely die. They didn't believe it. And they did surely die, didn't they? What God is saying in those scriptures is, I brought you here. I brought you to this good place. I gave you the power to get wealth. Don't you dare forget me and think you did all this when I put you there. It is a warning, y'all. I knew a woman years ago. Nice Christian woman. Always smiling. Nice to everybody. Read her Bible for like 30 minutes at the beginning of every work day. I mean, she'd have her Bible out on her desk. She'd go in early and sit there and read scripture. She worked really, really hard. She soon became very good at what she did. She worked in sales. And soon the numbers started to show that, you know, her hard work. And companies began to seek her out. Headhunters threw money at her and benefits at her, trying to hire her away from the company that she worked for. And she entertained their offers, and eventually she accepted one. Now, suddenly she's the boss. Had a staff of her own, which she chose, in a corner office in the very best part of town. And the change began almost immediately. The Bible disappeared as the staff was barked at and overworked. Clients were lied to and left on hold on the phone. Promises were broken. Friends who had left their jobs to work for her found themselves working for a slave-driving dictator in place of the sweet woman they once knew. She did dirty deals and quickly began known in the industry and was hated by more than not. Eventually, the staff all left their posts, no longer able or willing to work for a bullying tyrant. She had forgotten the God who had given her the power to get wealth and began acting like the devil. Remember the rich man talked about in Luke? He said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool! This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. The test of promotion 
is how you act after you get it. It is how you treat your fellow man, how you treat other people, but most of all, it is whether you remember God who promoted you. It's whether you remember and continue to act the same way or better towards God than before you got promoted. You know, it may be that in our time, God has blessed us so much that we are filled up completely and satisfied, and in our satisfaction, we have forgotten God. Take a few minutes and look around at yourself and the people around you, and look at how blessed you are. The fact that we're even here today means we are blessed. But is it possible that we no longer hunger for the things of God like we used to before we became so blessed? Look at the state of America. That grieves me probably more than anything. When America was so blessed, everyone would seek God. Everyone would follow God. Everyone would follow the commandments. But now we're so blessed, and it's like a Pharaoh that arose after, that, that knew not Joseph and started treating the people so horribly. We don't hunger for the things of God anymore, like those before us. We don't pray and read our Bibles all the time like those before us. We're satisfied with the way things are, so we don't think we need God, right? There's a pretty young man that's listening to this broadcast right now. I'd say you're about 30. You're wearing a white t-shirt. You got dark hair. It's short. And you're hearing this broadcast by accident. And that is exactly how you feel. You feel like you don't need God. You've got enough in your life and you just don't feel like you need God. This message is for you, sir. And God would say to you that you have less years to live in your life than you think you have. And I'm seeing the number two. I don't know if that's the number of years you have or what. But you need to get right with God, sir. If you don't, you're not going to get another chance. The test of promotion is the test of whether you are ready in your character and whether you have enough integrity to step into a promotion without it changing you. Without it changing how you treat people. Without it changing how you act without it changing how you seek God. Because if a promotion is going to make you where you seek God less, uh, you're probably not going to get a promotion. If God has to keep you in the wilderness to keep you seeking his face, you're probably going to do a lot of time in the wilderness. Can I just tell you that? God desires for us to seek him passionately. And whatever he needs to do with our circumstances, so we will. Well, that's at... His beck and call, he can do it however he wants to. Let's keep in mind, too, that promotion does not always look like what we think it's going to look like. Promotion in the eyes of God is pretty different from promotion in the eyes of people. There was a man named Brother Lawrence that lived almost 500 years ago, and he worked as just as a dishwasher in a monastery for 30 years, never married, he never sought for or received any kind of promotion. Does he sound like any kind of leader to you? Probably not in the eyes of the world, but you know what? He was a leader in his intimacy with the Savior. His letters were put into a book that have changed countless numbers of lives. It is read by Christians everywhere, all over the world today. It's called The Practice of the Presence of God. Being promoted, being a leader, does not always mean being the boss. It means allowing God to work through you to bring change to others. I have found in my walk that most of the time, I think I'm waiting on God almost all the time. He's actually waiting on me. But, you know, I think this happens to all of us, but we don't know what he's waiting for. But I like this illustration that talks about this sort of thing. A school teacher who was bypassed for a promotion went to her administrator and complained. I have 20 years of experience and you promoted someone who had only been teaching five years. The administrator replied, no, you don't have 20 years of experience. You have one year of experience 20 times. You're still teaching the same things in the same way you did your first year. You haven't grown in your profession. Jesus wants us to grow, to develop, 
to become effective representatives of him. He wants us to learn how to treat people. He wants us to learn how to make right choices, to do the right thing over and over, not do the right thing once and then do the wrong thing the next 25 times. Living like him needs to become a habit, a lifestyle. We need to be so tuned into him and seeking him so continually that that becomes second nature to us. It is his nature we should walk in, not our own. There are dangers that come with being promoted. There are dangers that come any time you are blessed. Not everyone can handle being blessed. It takes character and integrity to walk in blessing without changing, without the blessings changing you, without the wealth changing you. If God puts you in a Mercedes and a mansion today, who will you be tomorrow? Will you be the same person who seeks God? Or will you be out there flaunting it in front of all your friends, driving down the old street where you used to live, make sure that everybody can see that you're driving a Mercedes now? That's pride, y'all. And if God promotes you and you are prideful, the devil will shoot you down with great relish. And he will do it in a way that everyone will see and you will not be able to recover from. You don't want that. You want to be promoted and be able to walk in that promotion from now on. Right? There's a woman listening to this program right now who has lymphatic cancer. You have cancer in your lymph nodes. And you have been trying to believe God for healing, but you have not received the healing. The Lord says to you now that you are healed. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus right now. Receive it, woman of God. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. Okay, I want to read y'all a story. Once there was a mother pig who had three little pigs. The pigs left their mother's pen to live out their lives the best way they could. The little pig had not gone far when he decided he would base his life on the pursuit of happiness. He was going to do whatever made him happy. So he got credit cards. He bought all kinds of designer mud baths. He ate like a pig should. And he bought everything that had bells and whistles. He had the latest iPhone. He did whatever made him happy. Any little Miss Piggy he came across, he jumped into their pen. He had a few piglets here and there, but he didn't really feel responsible for them. He did what he wanted. It made him happy. He drank, he smoked, and he frolicked. One night, he sat in his house full of everything that he thought would make him happy, and along came a wolf. The wolf loved to tempt pigs and create havoc in their lives. He knocked at the door of the little pig's house, and he called, Little pig, little pig, I have a question. But the little pig answered, Well, what is it? The wolf questioned, Are you really happy? The question made the little pig think, for he had based his life on what would make him happy. He had no lasting relationships. The material things were not a lasting happiness. He ended up addicted and sick rather than happy. He felt empty inside. Nothing he had done had made a firm foundation. Then the wolf said, Ha! I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed until he blew the house in, and it fell with a great crash and ate up that little pig. The second little pig had not gone far when he decided he would base his life on success. He married a Miss Piggy who came from a good family and had some money. They had a few piglets to make her happy and to make the father-in-law happy. Plus, kids often showed others that you were successful at home. He excelled at his job. When his job required him to be away from home, he did it without a second thought. At times, success meant cheating a little, and he did it because it was what would make him successful. A few other Miss Piggies along the way had caught his eye, and they helped him to get the successes he wanted. He got raises. He got promotions. He climbed the barnyard ladder and did whatever was required. He bought the biggest pig pen on the block to show off all his success. One day, along came a wolf. The wolf loved to tempt pigs and create havoc in their lives. He knocked at the door of the little pig's house and called, Little pig, little pig, I have a question. But the little pig answered, What is it? The wolf questioned, Are you really successful? The question made the little pig think, for he had based his life on what would make him successful. He did not really know his kids. He had a trophy piglet wife, but there was nothing there. He had no self-respect or integrity. The material things were not a lasting happiness, and somebody always had a bigger pin. 
He had ended up successful in business, but a failure at his life. He felt empty inside. Nothing he had done made a firm foundation. Then the wolf said, Ha, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed until he blew in the house and it fell with a great crash and ate up that little pig. Before I finish that story, there's a man listening to this broadcast and you are in your, I think, about mid-40s. You're kind of a slender man. You have dark hair and you have success. You have worked very hard and you are very successful. And the Lord says that this message is for you. That you have put everything you have into success. But that you feel empty inside. And lately you've been tempted by drugs. And you're really leaning strong towards drugs because they make you feel better. And all the success that you have is not making you feel any better. And the Lord says to this, my son, come to me for comfort. Don't go to the drugs. The Lord says if you go to the drugs that death waits for you there. Please make the right choice, sir. I'm not sure, but I think part of your name might be Frank. I don't know if that's first or last. Okay. The third little pig traveled in his life, and he wondered what the point of life really was. Was it fame? Was it fortune? Was it success? Was it happiness? Was it people? What should a little pig build their life on? What should be the foundation? And the little pig said to himself, I think I will base my life on God and the things he desires. The pig met a Miss Piggy who shared his faith. The pig remained faithful to his wife and had children that he tried to raise with biblical values. He tried to balance family, church, giving, serving, business, politics, and all aspects of his life with biblical principles. He went to church, but more than that, he read the Bible and tried to actually live out what it taught. And the wolf came along. But the wolf wasn't able to blow this little pig's house in because it was built on a firm foundation. It was built on the word of God and the pursuit of God. There are a lot of things that we know in our mind to be right. We know we should read the word. We know that faith comes by hearing the word. We know that we should seek the face of God. We know that we should be in prayer every single day, multiple times per day. But... It is not what we know that will get us into heaven. What do we do? We must not be hearers only of the word. We must be doers of the word. It is only our firm belief in Jesus as the Son of God and following him that will give us happiness in this life and eternal life thereafter. Obviously, we're saved by faith through grace, through his grace. He deserves that our lives would be committed to him. He deserves that we would be seeking him continually. If you want long-lasting success on earth, that is what you need to commit your life to. Don't get a promotion and then throw God away. Oh, well, he did what I needed. Now I'm done with him. I don't need him now. Because when you do need him, and you will, you can't just pick him back up where you left him. It don't work that way. You have to start over. You have to start seeking his face and praying and believing. And that's harder to do when you're going through a real hard time than if you've been doing it the whole time, y'all. That's one of the things that you learn in the wilderness. Wherever your life is today, wherever it has taken you, whatever you're going through. And I know that some of you are going through real hard times because I've heard from you and I know that you are. And I know that some of you are in times of uncertainty. And I know very well what that feels like. Everything's not, you know, daisies and butterflies at my house either, y'all. I go through stuff too. But I know who to take that stuff to. You know, I know where the answer is. I know where my help is found. That's the only difference between me and some of you. We know Jesus. And if you know Jesus, you know to take your problems there. Cast your care on him and do your best to leave it there. Sometimes I forget to cast my care or I forget to leave it there. But he's always the one with the answer. If you've just been promoted or you're about to be promoted, remember this message. Remember that God is watching to see how you'll handle that promotion. Because there's more promotions up the road, but you won't get any of them if you forget God when you get the first one. If you stop giving, if you stop praying, if you stop reading the word, if you stop seeking his face, if all of a sudden 
you're a good enough Christian without doing any of the things that you know you're supposed to be doing. You go lukewarm, you won't be getting any other promotions from him. You might get some on your own, but you won't get any from him. And the ones that are blessed are from him. Thank you for listening. I hope that this episode has been a blessing to you. Y'all have a great week. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in to hear Glenda Linkus on Wings Radio. We hope that you've been encouraged and inspired in your daily walk with Christ. You can find more of Glenda's talks on her YouTube channel, Texas Author and the Number One. You can contact Glenda by email at wingsofprophecy at gmail.com or by mail at Glenda Lincas, P.O. Box 127, Princeton, Texas, 75407. Wings Radio is a non-denominational program and is not affiliated with any other church or non-profit organization. Have you ever gone through a time in your life where suddenly it just felt like your whole life was falling apart? I call these experiences the wilderness experiences. Wilderness experiences are a time of great uncertainty and change. Uh, there are times when our faith is tried and refined. After many experiences, the Lord spoke to me to write The Wilderness Companion, which is a virtual roadmap through the desert times of your life. Find out why you've been led to the wilderness. Find out what the biggest hindrance is to receiving provision in the wilderness. Find out what seven temptations of the wilderness are. Drastically cut the time you spend in the wilderness by learning how to partner with the Lord instead of working against Him. Every Christian needs to read The Wilderness Companion. It's by Glenda Lomax and it's available on Amazon.com or WingsOfProphecy.com. Amazon.com, The Wilderness Companion by Glenda Lomax. Have occasional strong urges to do the wrong thing? Things that mess up an otherwise Christian lifestyle? Is the sin nature rearing up or could it be something else? Spiritual soul tunnels are well-disguised avenues to reach a person who has turned from a formerly unhealthy relationship. If this sounds like it could describe you, you need Glenda Linko's new ebook, Severing Soul Ties and Leaving the Past Behind. For $3.99 at Amazon and WingsOfProphecy.com, that's Severing Soul Ties and Leaving the Past Behind.